Welcome to today's broadcast. No matter what kind of day you're having, please remember that God is big and He is good. He is bigger and better than you think. When a man and a woman marry for some reason other than love, the marriage is commonly referred to as a marriage of convenience. The young woman who isn't so interesting could suddenly become a lot more attractive when the young man finds out that her daddy heads up a Fortune 500 company. The young man who lacks in the personality department suddenly becomes a lot more fascinating when the young woman finds out that his mother is an heir to a textile fortune. But when two people marry for some reason other than love, they gut the potential of the relationship. The same is true for other relationships as well. As an example, when a friendship is formed for some reason other than the genuine regard for the other person. A sort of friendship of convenience is established, and the friendship is gutted of its potential. Yes, I'm fully aware of networking in the business community through various organizations, and I'm also fully aware of deals made on the golf course between business friends. And I suppose such mercenary friendships have their place. But any relationship that doesn't have at its basis a genuine regard for the welfare of the other person has been gutted of its potential. You can surely tell when someone wants to be friends with you for their own purposes. It's been happening to you since you were a kid. Maybe you had a really nice bicycle that they wanted to borrow. Or maybe your dad or your mom was the head coach of the team they wanted to get on. Most of us, however, want people drawn to us because of who we are and not because of what we can do for them. But then we're not all that innocent either. We also establish relationships with other people for our own gain. We too are guilty of having self-serving motives when establishing relationships. If you are a born-again believer, what was the pitch that sold you on Jesus? If your experience was like that of most people, I assume your motives for surrendering your life to Jesus were self-serving. Well, join the crowd. Most of us were sold on Jesus as a way to get out from under our guilt and our shame. Or we had some other problem with no human solution. But if we get stuck, if we get stuck at this stage in our relationship with Jesus, we effectively gut the potential of our relationship with Him. If our faith in God is just about understanding how to get God to deliver us from our troubles, then we have truly missed out. For more, please visit GiveMeThatMountain.org and you have a wonderful day.